So, this is my spoiler review for Shogun Episode 3, titled Tomorrow is Tomorrow. And here I will go over full spoilers for the episode, and I'm going to recap everything that happens. So if that's it, please don't watch this if you don't want to be spoiled. So, last week in Episode 2 of Shogun, Turunaga escaped an assassination attempt. And here in Episode 3 he comes to a major realization that staying in the city means risking the lives of himself and his loved ones. So to avoid this, Turunaga devises an escape plan. However, with Ishido just relentlessly pursuing him, will he be able to escape the palace of Osaka? So let me just say that this was a really big episode for the character of John Blackthorn. And that's because this episode, he saves Turunaga, and he gets given the greatest honor. And this is especially just considering that he's a foreigner. And the honor that he gets is becoming Hadamodo. And Hadamodo is a high-ranking samurai, so it's a big deal. And the title really means Guardian or Protector of the Flag. And it's really a position that proves just how important John has now become. And now, John is a vassal of Lord Toronaga's fiefdom. And this means that he will no longer be treated as a barbarian or foreigner. And especially just in those in Toronaga's circle. And after just proving not only his loyalty to Toronaga, but also his skills, John earned his place among the Lord's allies. So this is just major character development. And his first mission as a vassal of Turunaga will be to train his troops on foreign ocean ship skills. And the English navigator's knowledge will be essential to prepare Turunaga's men for the conflict that they're about to face. And not only will Blackthorn train Turunaga's samurai to battle on the sea, but he will also start teaching lessons to Toronaga himself. At the end of episode 3, John even teaches Toronaga how to properly dive into water, and they both race at the end. And this is really just a symbol of their newly formed alliance. And in this episode, we also see more of Yabu. And Asano is just such a great actor, I just love seeing him whenever he's on screen. He always plays his role so well. And in episode 3, when Turunaga meets Yabu, he confronts him about the assassination attempts on John in his castle. And Turunaga suspects Ishido's involvement in this, and he questions Yabu about his connection. And Yabu sort of admits it. He admits that Ishido promised him Turunaga's position, and this will be in exchange for assassinating Turunaga. But Yabu also says that he's not interested in this position. Instead, he really just wants to expand his territory in Suruga province. However, he also emphasized just the importance of maintaining his leadership. And he revealed that the assassination was meant for Ainjin's son, meaning Blackthorn. And he begs for a relocation along with Lady Kiri to his fishing village. And this is for safety. And Turunaga promises Yabu that he can take control of the province that he wants, in exchange for the favor. So, the group prepares to leave Osaka, but they find themselves caught in a race against time. And their efforts to leave are interrupted by an unexpected arrival of Lord Ishido. And Turunaga secretly changes position with Lady Kiri. But as they approach the main gate, the guards are checking the carriages. And in an amazing way to prevent this, John creates a scene by acting like a crazy person. The purity of a woman! And this scene with John acting crazy, it was also in the 1980 version, and in that, it was not handled well at all. <laughs> but it did give me a good laugh, so I'll give it that. But in the novel, it's explained a lot better. And apparently what happened is, John heard that people who are insane 
were viewed by the Japanese people as being controlled by a kami or god. So because he's acting like a crazy person, they think a kami is controlling him, and he gets out of being killed. But in the book when John is acting insane, Ishido actually almost takes his head off. And it's really Yabu that saves him. And in this series, John's outburst of craziness is just blamed on him being a foreigner. And it is still kind of awkward, but probably the best they could do with such a scene. It's very hard to film something like this. And not everything transfers well from a book to a film. The purity of a woman! <clears throat> anyway, after this insane stunt, their crew gets hit by an ambush. And this was not part of their plan. And it turns out that each of those forces are in the middle of this conflict. And to their shock, it's none other than Lord Kiyama who's leading this ambush. And he declares that each of those followers will meet their end along with John. And in this moment, it's also revealed to everyone that Toronaga is fleeing Osaka. And to save Lord Toronaga during this ambush, Lady Muriko's husband, Buntaro, he courageously stays behind to give his crewmates a last chance to escape from Osaka. And this is despite John's suggestion to rescue him. The Hiramatsu refuse, and this leaves Buntaro to face the enemies alone. So this whole sequence was just really well done and it was full of action. And I really liked how they were able to light the scene with just torches and flaming arrows. And we also see Mariko wielding a Naginata for the first time. And I rewatched this scene and I noticed that it does cut back to her quite a few times and it shows her fighting multiple men. She really is the star of this fight. Meanwhile, John is shown hardly doing anything. And it's funny because he only gets a kill because the guy he's fighting is hit by a stray arrow. And in the novel, both of them are really struggling to survive. But what's funny is, John is actually the one to save Mariko at one point. And I'm gonna guess that Buntaro survives this, and I only know this because in the trailer, it showed him shooting this arrow right by Mariko's face. So we know we're gonna get that scene. And also his backstory is just pretty important too, I don't think they're gonna skip that. And in the novel, the scene is very similar. He gets trapped, but he's about to commit seppuku. And it's explained that he's gonna do this because he's a samurai, and because of that, he can't allow himself to be captured. But in the novel, at the last moment, Toronaga yells at him to survive, and then he runs off and he does. And after this big escape, they make their way to their ship, and they make a trade with the black ship traders. And they also ambush some of the pirates who are blocking their exit. And John, who was told to stay back on Turanaga's smaller ship, he decides to bravely follow the black ship, and he uses it as cover. And he also manages to escape Osaka. And we also get a really exciting boat race. We finally get to see how good of a pilot John is. And he goes up against this giant Portuguese ship. And right before John's about to crash into the rocks, Rodriguez lets him out. And this is sort of his way of just returning the favor for saving him in the last episode. I said that repaid. And meanwhile, Turanaga resigns from the Council of Regents. This prevents his impeachment, as there are five regents that are needed to vote for that. They only get four. And then back on the ship, Turanaga rejoins John, and he thanks him for his help, and he admires his bravery during their escape. And in return, he gives John the honorable title of Hadamoto. And he asks him to train his men while ignoring his past crimes. 
the Portuguese give Toronaga evidence that John was a pirate, but he doesn't seem to care. So, a lot happens in this episode, and there is definitely more action, so people should enjoy that. And there was just some really great battle scenes. Hopefully we'll get more of that in more episodes. And like I said, it was also great seeing John and his skills sailing. And there was also a brief hint of John and Mariko's love story, and we'll probably get into that next episode. So there's still several more episodes, a lot could happen, and I'm just excited to see what aspects of the novel and the 1980 series they decide to keep. Maybe because they're speeding along with the story, they're not gonna rush the last acts as much as they did in the last series. And I have a feeling and I hope that they go lighter on the love story stuff. I feel like that dragged the other series a lot. Instead, they should just focus more on Turanaga and his battles later on. And that's something that the novel had, but the series previously skipped. So anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this episode. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Thank you.